This clay pot has just been fired in the ashes of a campfire, as primitive cultures have done it for centuries. This method produces a rather soft and porous product, but it is ceramic. Which means it is made of clay and has been subjected to a temperature over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Clay is a common type of earth. Plastic and fine particled, found in deposits all over the world. Here is a relatively pure form of clay being mined from between layers of coal. This clay contains little iron. It appears gray before firing and light buff color after firing. Other clays, like this surface red clay, contain much iron and will fire red or brown like this flower pot. The clay you played with in elementary school was mixed with petrolatum, which is Vaseline, so that it did not harden. The clay which potters use in fire is mixed with water. After we have dug the clay from the ground, we mix it with water perhaps using this blunger. Then strain the liquid clay, called slip, into plaster bats to stiffen. When the clay has stiffened to a modeling consistency or a plastic condition, it is rolled out of the bat and kneaded to improve the plasticity and to thoroughly mix the clay. This kneading process is called wedging. Clay in this condition is called moist clay. Of course, you can buy your clay in moist form ready to use. Or you may buy clay powder and prepare it yourself. form the clay into vessels or sculptures by several means. The most basic and primitive method is simply pinching. Coils of clay may be rolled and the coil method used to lay up the wall of a hollow object. Much of the world's pottery has been made by this versatile method. It is possible by using coils to produce almost any free-form shape. slab of moist clay may be rolled out with a rolling pin and sections of this slab cut and assembled.
The slab method produces pots or sculptures with straight sides. Most potters use a potter's wheel, either an electric wheel or foot powered to form their pots. And this process is called throwing. We throw pots on the wheel. Once this skill has been mastered, a competent craftsman can throw 50 or 100 pots or more in a single day. Pottery factories, which turn out wear in mass production, frequently employ jiggering, using a template bolted to a pivoting arm and a plaster mold on a potter's wheel. Also widely used is slip casting, which involves pouring liquid clay into a porous plaster mold. When a sufficient thickness has built up, the liquid center is poured out. to 30 minutes the clay has shrunk and stiffened enough that it can be removed from the mold. Now that we have made some pots and they have dried we call them greenware and they are ready for firing in a kiln. A kiln basically a box of fire brick, which is a special type of brick that can withstand repeated firings. Some kilns are small, perhaps only a few inches in each direction. And others may be as big as a house, like this kiln for firing bricks but they all have a means of being heated to high temperatures. A kiln may be heated with electricity using nichrome or canthal wire. Many potters have gas kilns using either natural or bottled gas. And some fire their kilns with oil or kerosene. Coal is used for fuel in some areas. And wood has been used all over the world. The kilns we have seen are periodic. That is, they are fired periodically, being heated up and cooled off each time. A tunnel kiln fires continuously. These sewer pipes are moved slowly through the kiln, which is over 400 feet long, in 42 hours. Most potters gauge firing temperatures by using pyrometric cones. These are made of clay and other ingredients and are carefully compounded to melt at a certain known temperature. So when I see this last cone melt and bend, the heat is shut off and the kiln is allowed to cool. 
The next day, the kiln may be opened and the pieces removed. These pieces have been fired once to cone 08, which is about 1750 degrees. And in this state, they are known as bisque ware. They are hardened, but porous. And ready for glazing. A ceramic glaze is a fired on coating similar to glass. It may be glossy or shiny or dull and matte in appearance. A glaze seals the surface and also may beautify the piece. All glazes are formulated to fuse or melt at a certain temperature. They may be purchased in liquid or powder form. Many potters make their own glazes, selecting from a great many recipes, but they generally rely on just a few favorites, which are found to be reliable. Glazes are composed of powdered chemicals, basically silica or flint and clay. The glaze batch may also contain whiting, which is powdered limestone or chalk, feldspar, lead for low melting temperatures, zinc oxide, aluminum oxide, or perhaps several other chemicals. For color, various oxides are used, such as copper, cobalt, chromium, iron, nickel, and several others. Now we mix this powder with water to a creamy consistency and apply it to the pot by pouring. Dipping. Brushing. Or spraying. During the second firing, the tremendous heat melts the glazes, brings out the colors, and fuses the glazes to the pots. There is always an element of unpredictability involved in the result. This is one of the many reasons why ceramic art can be so fascinating.